Hi, my name is Billy Brown. I'm a board certified behavior analyst with Brett Novian Associates. Today I'm going to be going over the seven dimensions of applied behavior analysis. Whether you're brand new to the field or you've been here for decades, these dimensions are the foundation for everything that we do in our field. Bear, Wolf, and Risley in 1968 wrote an article entitled Some Dimensions of Applied Behavior Analysis. In this, they outline the seven that I'm going to go over today. And if you stick through to the end, I'm going to add some tips for those of you who are studying for the big exam. First, we have applied. Applied refers to, is the terminal behavior socially significant? The reason why we care about social significance with the things that we're teaching our individuals is that those are the things that impact their daily lives with their family, their friends, and their community. We want to be sure that the socially significant behaviors are something that will stick with them for the rest of their lives. Like things like learning how to read, learning how to write, making their own food, even basic skills like tying your own shoes. Next up is behavioral. Behavioral is when we're talking about, is the actual behavior observable and measurable? When we're looking to see those two things, it's important because it's hard for us as behavior analysts and clinicians to implement behavior plans if we can't see it. So and a good example of this would be looking at increasing someone's running time or their running distance. We can observe them running and we can measure how far that they've run. Then we have analytic. Analytic means that the clinician has control over behavior. What that means on its surface is that through their intervention, they've demonstrated that they can either evoke or elicit a response from the individual. This can mean increasing a behavior, decreasing a behavior. It all depends on the type of intervention that you've placed. Next up is technological. Technological refers to when a program is able to be run by anybody anywhere as long as they have proper training and materials. A good example of this would be if you're given a program that simply says, every time a student raises their hand, give them a reinforcer. It's not technological because we don't know what the reinforcers are. So if we have a more well-written program that says every time a student raises their hand, give them one of the reinforcers, such as high fives, stickers, cookies, whatever that reinforcer may be, we at least know now what it is and we're better able to run that program. Conceptually systematic is our next dimension that we're gonna go over. When something's conceptually systematic, it means that the terminology or the jargon that we're using is consistent across all the clinicians. For example, if I say, we're gonna run a differential reinforcement of alternative behaviors on a fixed ratio one schedule, most behavior analysts are gonna hear that and know exactly what I'm talking about, right down to most cl clinicians. If I were to say, we're gonna go in there and add some reinforcement for when he's doing this other thing and uh, when, when he does that, you know, it, it should work. That doesn't fly. It, giving that to somebody in another country, they might not understand that this, these terms are what I'm referring to. When we keep language consistent, we're able to get interventions more cohesive across all the kids that we work with, all the individuals that we work with. Second to last is, is it effective? This one's pretty straightforward. You're looking at, did your intervention work? Now, we can say that if you've got a kid who has uh, escape maintained aggression in a school, and every time a teacher gives him a demand, he just starts wailing on other kids or other staff in the classroom. And we're trying to teach him functional communication to just request a break instead. If he does it one out of 10 times, did it work? No, it's, it's not working to a level that we would consider socially significant. Now, if we can get that up to eight out of 10 times or 10 out of 10 times, that's far more socially significant for that individual. We're teaching them functional communication. We would call that effective. Finally, we have generality. This refers to generalization. We should be incorporating this one right from the onset of programming. Now what this refers to is an individual's ability to perform a terminal behavior or the final product uh, across different settings, different times, different people, and in a variety of different ways when possible. So if we give them a novel setting at a novel time, they're gonna be able to perform whatever the task is. Like let's take tying shoes for an example. If they can tie their shoes any time of the day or with different pairs of shoes on, doesn't matter who they're with in their life, they're able to get down and tie that shoe to mastery, then we would call that generalized. Now for some study tips. These are some ways that you can memorize these for when you're ready to take the exam. If we were gonna go over and try to get one thing, one acronym to memorize all seven of these dimensions, think of the term get a cat. G for generality, E for effective, T for technological, A for applied, C for conceptual systems, A for analytic, and then that final B is for behavioral. So that's great for memorizing the words, but now we need to memorize what the words do for us, like what each one means. 
Now, this is a little tricky because I tried to keep it for, to, down to one word, but if you remember what that one word means in the grand scheme, it'll help you find that definition a lot faster. For applied, we have significant, meaning that it's a socially significant behavior. For behavioral, we have is it observable? For analytic, control. Technological, universal. Conceptual systems, jargon. Effective, successful. Generality, mastered. Thanks for watching and be sure to comment down below what you would like to see in the next video that we have. And if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, click that like button, and then click the bell to make sure you get those notifications in your inbox. Thanks.